So I'm wood graining a dashboard uh, of a 1950 Plymouth, and uh, these are the things I'm using here. So I have a gloss khaki for the back, like inside, just so it's kind of light colored, and you can see, um, you know, just all your your gauges and your wiring and stuff. If I did it in, you know, black or dark brown or something, it make it a little bit darker. I got a couple of these finishing pads just to smooth out uh, some of the coats. I've got this Rust-Oleum flat brown, and I've got some of this here, Minwax, early American. As you can see, this is pretty, pretty loose, pretty liquidy. You know, it's not a very thick stain. And uh, to apply that, so I just got some of this up here. To apply that, I got a little chip brush and I cut it down so that it's a little stubby, a little uneven, you know, to kind of give me um, uh, uh, some texture, like some grooves. And over here I have the dashboard with, um, so I spray painted it in the brown to begin with. And I just applied a light coat of the stain over it you can see it's a little little drippy if the light gets it right you know I'm not concerned with any of that right now I'm just putting a light coat over it to kind of get it to the to the tone that I want so dip your brush and the stuff's pretty runny so just kind of dab it off on a piece of cardboard there if you use like a Cloth, drop cloth, it'll soak through, stain whatever's underneath. But so you get a little bit of it there, and then just kind of just drag it across, kind of add a little bit of pressure, it gives you streaks, and you can just kind of brush back and forth, give you a little bit of texture. You can see some of the streaks in there. Doesn't have to be perfect for this first application. You can run back over this, over that run. You can see the long streaks happening. It's that first coat is starting to dry and get a little bit sticky. So it's allowing the brush to kind of cut little grooves into it and that kind of gives you the the wood grain effect so you can kind of I don't know if that makes sense kind of give it like a little bit of a wave as you're going across and it looks a little bit more wood like and then you're just gonna let that dry you can come back over here on the other side Again, kind of the same thing as that first layer is drying. Take a thin coat or a thin, thin down mixture on your brush and drag it across the kind of stickiness. I have a spot over here. You can kind of see it, you know, pulling up. Let's see if I can get out of the shadow here see it kind of pulling up so I've got an almost dried brush and I'm just gonna make quick strokes just kind of redistribute that stuff that's pulling up and then you can just add kind of a little wave to it and again it's just the bottom coat so I just kind of want to give it a wood grain effect There's a, there's a little spot right here, it's a little discolored, and uh, I don't like the way that looks. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to get some of that brown that I sprayed initially, and I am going to just mist right back over that area. 
And then take my brush, load it with just a little bit, like kind of uh, kind of just wiped off of the stuff that's sitting on the cardboard, just to, just to be able to get something on there. And then just make little strokes across it, kind of blend that spray paint back in. to kind of give it a little bit more of a wood grain look. So what we're doing now is we're just kind of building the grain. So I'm going to start adding this layer of mahogany stain. Um, this is an old can that I have from a previous project. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to Pour that into the into the cup here and start applying. Now here we are with the mahogany, and the mahogany is a lot darker. It's a, it's a really dark stain. So I am going to brush it off onto the cardboard here. And really, just make my brush dry, but with little kind of traces of the mahogany on it. And then I'll just be lifting it up you know, back up off the cardboard. So, let's find a spot here. Let's just start in the center. The little streaks of this darker stain over the top of the kind of dry, sticky first stain. You're going to see it's starting to give it a little bit of a little bit of depth, a little bit of actual grain. Instead of just brush strokes, it's going to start to give it a texture. And it's just a little, just a little back and forth. it a little bit heavier if you want to get a darker stain or if you want more of the dark than the light I'm trying to keep it a little bit on the lighter side so that when it's in the car the grain is visible the one that I have in my car it looks really nice out in the Sun but I do feel like it's like it looks a little bit dark when it's in the car and, uh, you know, maybe it helps or doesn't help that I have a, I have a visor over the window. And uh, it cuts down on some of the direct sun that comes into the car. But I kind of wish that I would have done it a little bit lighter. sticky you don't want to do it while the while the stain is still uh, still wet because it'll just blend and you want it to more like sit on top and create streaks on top you can do little short blasts or you can do long even strokes add a little bit of a wave just for that movement like cheap like chip brush is leaving you know the bristles behind um, none of that's really going to matter during this uh, you know initial process um, we're going to go back this is this is after a couple layers what time is it? This is after a couple layers of the, uh, the, the darker 
stain going over the lighter stain. It's starting to really take shape. Um, but anyway, yeah, so there's little things like right here, you know, that are you know, little bristles that are going to get stuck in there. And it's not really going to make a whole lot of difference. You want to give this, like, you know, depending on what the weather conditions are like, you want to give it some time to dry completely. I would say, like, you know, I'm in sunny Southern California. Uh, if I had a place to leave this outside for a couple of days, you know, I might give it two days to kind of bake in the sun and really just kind of dry out. And uh, even, you know, you're gonna run the risk of getting little little leaves and flecks and stuff. Um, but after, the, after this first layer dries, uh, you're gonna go back in with one of those buffing uh, pads that uh, I showed you there at the beginning and you're gonna buff it out so that all of these brush strokes kind of even out and you're not gonna be able to feel that texture. And then after you buff it out, all of the all of the little bristles and all of the you know dust and whatever that gets stuck in there, all of that st little burrs, all of that stuff's gonna come out. And then you can uh, give it another another nice coat, you know, kind of same process um, with the uh, just the darker stain, the uh, the walnut or whatever colors you choose. Um, after it dries out, you're gonna go back over it with that that darker stain just to kind of you know fill in whatever whatever you might have accidentally rubbed off with the uh, with the buffing pads and then uh, yeah I recommend putting a couple layers of clear coat over it and uh, I guess we'll see where we'll see where this is at in a couple of days I'll drag it back out it's gonna be in my garage so might take two days, might take three days before it's not really sticky anymore. But uh, I'll pick this right back up as soon as, uh, as soon as it dries up. So here it is after sitting overnight in my garage. I guess it only took a few hours for it to be dry to the touch. see the you can see the wood grain effect really taking shape so now I'm gonna go in with the scotch bright pad and just kind of give it like a light buffing and take out all the burrs and all the little like here I had a, a bristle from that chip brush there's another one right here you know I'm just gonna scratch that out of the way it doesn't it doesn't really matter if you uh, mess it up on this undercoat. So little finger spots and all of that stuff aren't really going to matter because as you can tell it hasn't even really gotten the, the wood grain effect here, you know. So still in the kind of base coat stage. So just applying a little bit of light pressure with the, the gray pad here that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And uh, just a little bit to kind of like take the, take the gloss out of it. Deburr it. So I have shifted, I'm doing this one handed here with my camera in my hand. But kind of see the, the gloss coming out of it. And I am trying to, I don't know how much difference it'll make, but I am trying to kind of do this uh, with the grain and not against it, just in case it does create any grooves or anything, it'll all get kind of blended in. this up off camera just this final well maybe not final but this uh, D 
deburring before I start the next coat. I just finished all the deburring. Let's see. Let's get it in the sun a little bit here. There we go. Just finished the deburring. You can still feel a little bit of the little bit of the, the stain texture on it. Uh, because if I were to smooth it out completely, I would actually just be sanding it off. So you're going to feel a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of texture where the, you know, the stain is a little bit, a uh, little bit raised over the spray paint layer. But, so for now I have this damp microfiber cloth and I'm just going to clean it off just real lightly here. Um, try not to get it too wet, just enough to kind of take all the dust and residue off. And, and I'm going to let it sit for a little while in the sun and dry off before I get to the next step. Alright, I'm back again with this thing. It's a wood graining tool. It's uh, made out of rubber. You can get them at Michael's Craft Store. Home Depot. I think I got this one from Michaels. Anyway, it has kind of like a wave pattern in there. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the dark stain and just wipe it off onto the cardboard like I was doing uh, previously. Just you know, leave like a little bit of a little bit of wetness there. Just enough for the the wood grain tool to kind of pick it up on the surface. Okay, then I'm going to grab it and just just plop it down and just kind of make like a rocking motion with it. So we get the wood grain tool wet, not, not super super wet. Just try to get it all the way up to the edge. And then smack it down on there and just like drag it across. Kind of rock it back and forth. Rock it back and forth. So you're gonna see where it comes in contact. It's leaving a thicker line than the uh, than the brush I was using. So it's making your grain a little bit more defined. So I'm using this wood grain tool. You can get it at Home Depot or Michaels. I think I got this one from Michaels. And I'm going in with the, uh, with the dark stain again. Um, kind of like, you know, brush it off, don't, uh, don't get it like super heavy, just kind of, uh, get a little bit sticky on your cardboard base, and then just kind of wipe it off and brush it on there. Then you're going to use this thing and kind of, uh, press down and just, that's going to be taking away some of that dark stain and when you rotate it like this it kind of creates a wood pattern. I personally think this wood pattern is a little bit extreme for the you know the, the look that we want on this dash. So you can uh, start it out like this just to get uh, the actual you know kind of texture and the grain moving in the direction you want and then just kind of let it sit and let it get sticky you know let it get a little a little tacky and then you'll go back over it so let's take a look at this side over here that I already put this the stain on and now it's already kind of getting tacky so I'm able to kind of maneuver it around a little bit better. Wipe that off there. Give it a little bit of a 
wave, rocking it back and forth. So I think this might be a little bit dark. All right, so I ran that wood grain tool along the along the top of this thing, and uh, I've just taken my brush and started manipulating that grain, the the real thick lines that it left. And as long as it's sticky, and tacky, uh, this brush, if you press down, it allows you to kind of uh, manipulate it and smooth it out so that you don't have big, thick grain marks. Because these, uh, these wood dashes, or wood grain dashes, were, uh, were not, you know, real thick, coarse, defined grains. So, just using the brush to go back and smooth it all out. So this is, yeah, this is already pretty sticky. So I put some pretty heavy grain in there. And uh, we don't necessarily want it to look like that. So that graining tool just kind of acts as, you know, a base. So now I'm just pushing that around and manipulating it into a horizontal grain a little wave to it horizontal waves or horizontal grain and this here too this is uh, a little bit stickier but it still lets me it lets me move it around so I'm just going to like kind of almost like a like a hard back and forth, almost like you're shining a shoe to kind of like force that stain into shape. And then a little bit of smoothing out. That's what we've got. So I'm gonna do that here in the space where we have the, the ashtray and the clock. Just gonna get a little bit of the little bit of the stain and brush it on. You know, if you brush it on unevenly like this, where it's gonna be dark in some places, then you can get your wood grain tool and slide it across, and it'll give you almost an uneven color, which looks a little bit more natural. Some parts of the wood are darker than others. So, here we go with, again, that kind of like preliminary heavy grain. We're going to give that a minute to, uh, to dry, get tacky. All right, so now this is a little bit tacky, so I can put my brush on it. It doesn't wipe it away. But uh, I'm gonna take the brush, mostly, mostly dry, a little bit of a, you know, tiny bit of stain residue on it. And then just push this around into, into submission. Get it to kind of create the grain pattern that I'm looking for. across it, kind of uh, get a couple more of those lines in there, a couple more of those lines along the edges. Dry out the brush, and just really, really, really lightly kind of smooth 
take those out. Just like barely like hardly any pressure at all over the top there. Pretty much just, uh, you know, you can see what I did here. This is starting to smooth out. There we go. So yeah, so I think we're pretty much done. And uh, I'll, do, uh, I'll do a walk around in just a second without the sun. So I can do a walk through. Hopefully the, uh, the lighting in my garage will do it justice. Um, I still have to do one final buffing on this surface after it dries. And then uh, I will clear coat it. And then buff it and clear coat it. I'll probably do two, maybe three layers of clear coat. Or, get some fancier clear coat and get away with one coat. Taking the, uh, the white buffing pad here to it, and uh, I don't know if you can see. So I didn't do this side yet, but I did this half here, and uh, I'm just going really lightly, just kind of, uh, just kind of giving it one last little kind of buffing. Don't press down too hard taking some of the shine out before I clean it all up and then clear coat it. So here it is in the sun. I'm gonna go back over it with a damp, lint-free cloth just to kind of pick up all the pick up all the dust from that buffing. But I really just wanted to kind of take the, the lacquered shine effect off of it from the, from the stain and the paint. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that and then let it dry and uh, I'll be back in a second with the clear coat. So I'm about to give it a clear coat, glossy crystal clear enamel. I've heard different things about, you know, using something like this that will, uh, you know, eventually maybe crack or, you know, something like that. Uh, I've also heard of using, um, there's this type of automotive paint where you pop the top and there's a little thing that you crack that, that drops inside of the paint that acts as like a hardener or something like that. But, really not that concerned with this you know I'm doing it myself and if down the road anything happens to it and I have to repaint it I guess it's not that big a deal since I did it the first time so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use this I'm gonna apply a thin coat here over the over the whole thing and then uh, I'll let it dry nice you know light blast from quite a distance. You don't want to get up too close. You'll get a you'll get some runs in there. Here's one layer of clear coat. As soon as that dries, I'll be buffing it back out. Buff that clear coat. Give it another coat. See how it looks. And then uh yeah, I might be doing three coats, four coats. 
I don't know yet. Here's the finished product.